Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Tucker and Crowley Report. I am joined by Franklin Tucker, editor of the Belmontonian, which you can find online at belmontonian.com. And I am Mike Crowley. So, Franklin, we have a number of items to discuss in the news today. Let's talk about the rink. Oh, we got to talk about the rink until it finally either gets built or <laughs> evaporates in the well, in the heat. Well, Franklin, that's the question. Will the rink get built? What's the story? Well, right now, um, as of this week, uh, the rink committee came before the select board to formally give them a heads up on why the rink has been delayed and why it costs four point four million dollars more than it originally was expected to cost. And a lot of that has to just do with inflation, um, cost inflation. It's, it's been, it's, it's, it's occurred uh, across the state. Uh, the town of um, Stoneham is building a, um, a, a new high school for like $180 million. They had to go uh, last year to their voters and ask for a $24 million uh, addition because of increasing people. construction costs in uh, labor costs construction okay. costs of all sorts from concrete to how they're going to refrigerate the building it's just spiraling upwards and there's just been delay after delay after delay and you know every month that this project is delayed it's cost uh, the committee uh, one hundred fifty thousand dollars so you know you they want to get this built as soon as possible as quickly as possible but they they just don't they don't have the money. So so Franklin, let me ask you this. So so they're they're saying that that an additional four point four million dollars is needed, um, or they would have to dramatically cut back the project. Is that right? It it's well if so so there is a plan A and a plan B. Okay. And they're going to be sending the plan A and plan B to the uh, select board, and I think that it's pretty evident that uh, they're going to be coming towards. They're going to be either having a special town meeting or uh, inserting a special town meeting within the town meeting uh, in June. Yeah, they, they've already been told it's either going to be June 5th or June 10th that this will come before uh, the members. And um, uh, it appears that they're going to be asking for $2 million um, uh, on, in option A. Now, okay. if they get option A, it's, it's going to look pretty much like the, the project which, they were, which the town has promised because right now uh, the uh, uh, building committee is going through something called value engineering, which means right. they're cutting a lot from, mm -hmm. uh, they're, cut, they're trying to cut as much uh, uh, from like aesthetics in the building uh, and trying not to touch any of the programming. Uh, so they will have, um, you know, they will keep all four locker rooms under uh, option A. They'll have, uh, even they'll even have like a, a small cafe and uh, a place where uh, where during the winter um, uh, during the fall I should say you can open the uh, front of the um, of the uh, uh, building the rink and allow people to like get warm or you know use bathroom during football games and other events during the fall. And, you know basically what they're going to do is they're taking the um, solar array which uh -huh. cost a million dollars to begin with. They're going to take that out. Um, and they're also going to reduce the um, the lobby, but other than that, it looks like it's, it looks like the project that people voted for. So okay. they've done a good job of, of reducing price, but they're also going to be coming forward. Now, if they go to option B, which means uh, town meeting does not approve the two million dollars, you're going to see a, a radically different building. Only two locker rooms instead of the four that were promised not only to the town but also to the athletic department, the school committee. Um, and there's going to be it's going to be a tighter building. It's not going to be as friendly. Um, so and 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 even when you do something like this, you're going to have to redesign a lot of the project. That means it's going to take time, and it's even going to cost more money. So it's 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 a it's a no win situation really with. Option B. So I, I do want to ask this about options A and B, Franklin. So so um, um, so ideally, the, the committee, the building committee, would would like to have four point four million, but 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 I'm understanding that that's not a possibility at all. What that's what right. may be a possibility, depending on what the select board decides, and then ultimately town meeting. Would be an additional two million. Well, Is that no, right? that's correct. But you know, there's there's also a there's also some thinking right now that it's not going to be a two million dollars, even though the town could provide two million dollars. Okay, it could be a million dollars in additional funding that comes from debt, and it could be another million dollars that maybe can be found somewhere in 
the nooks and crannies of, 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 of town accounts. All right. so, so, you know, there we, we've been talking a little bit about the Kendall Fund, which is, you know, uh, the insurance policy that was um, that uh, came from the um, uh, fire that destroyed the Kendall School, right. which where now the um, uh, Council of Aging is. Um, I know that, that there are some people who are adamant, like, no, we'll never use that money. Why not? You know, it's one of those things where if you got it in the bank, and you have a situation where you can build a rink that's going to, you know, benefit the, the community. Why not use the Kendall Fund? So I do want to ask this too, Franklin. Now, part of the decision making that took place about um, the the type of rink that was being built um, was was framed in part due to the um, um, the lobbying efforts of of those in the community who support sustainability and and um, and um, application of solar and alternative energy. Um, well, you to, can't have solar arrays if you don't have a building. Well, that's that's <laughs> true, but um, but some people would argue that it doesn't make any sense from the standpoint of 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 construction today to be building buildings that do not have sustainability features built in. So I'm just wondering. I'm not advocating. I'm wondering what 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 are we likely to see in terms of. Um, what happens at town meeting, or 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 what what the response of of the the rink building committee is to those people in the community who who are interested in in sustainable well well, they, well well that well the committee has has, has been very uh, they they always want to mention that the building is prepared to have uh, it, it's it's wired for uh, uh, solar okay so when there's when the time comes or if if there's a, uh, you know, a fundraiser out there to get a million dollars to put the solar arrays, they are, they they're going to put that up as soon as possible. They're saying they're not denying that um, that uh, it, it it would be a better building with with solar uh, energy or solar heating. It's just that you like I said before, you got to have a building to put those solar arrays on. If you don't have the building, well, you know, it's it's kind of it's kind of useless not to. Um, to, to advocate for that. Okay, I I think Franklin, you had some some dates that um, are worth mentioning about uh, uh, related to the decision making that's coming up. That's right. Uh, the uh, select board will meet with the uh, rink uh, committee again. This time, the rink committee will have firm numbers on what they need, and they'll be requesting uh, funds from the town. And this, this is on May twentieth. May twentieth, uh, Monday. But the mo more important date, I think, for the public is that the rink is that the building committee is going to hold a public meeting on the 22nd okay um at uh, i believe they said this uh, the select board uh room at, at at town hall but i think they should find a, a larger venue i think it's very uh, this could be a, a, a this will be a chance for the for the greater uh, belmont community to go in and ask a lot of questions and uh, really express their own opinion about this okay and, and then, and, and then, then, like I said, that? then following that, it, it will come before a special uh, 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 town meeting. You know, you can have a special town meeting within the town meeting, or you can have one that's separate. When it's it's still a, a, a little up in the air how they're going to be doing. But it. but likely for June. Oh yes, June fifth or June tenth. That's what the mm -hmm. building committee has, has said that the town has already told them. If there's going to be a date where it's going to be some you know new debt uh, going to be requested. It's going to be either on the fifth uh, or the tenth. And I do want to ask one last question: Is the project, in any sense, stopped until the money situation is resolved, or is work continuing? Work has continued, but very lightly. You know, no one wants to spend any money until you get some idea of um, exactly what is going to be, you know, required in terms of. Uh, I mean, they know that they, if they, if they're going to build something, they're. Uh, they, they can build, they can get the steel frame, yeah, uh, and that's what this building is. It's mostly a steel frame. It's it's going to be prefabbed in in Canada and brought down here. And then there's also site prep work that still would need to take place. In exactly. It, how, in any case. That's right. But they're not going to go forward until they they have a firm idea that the, they're going to get either the two million dollars or not the two million dollars. Because if they do, if we go to option B, all those plans, all that detailed plans that they have in their hands. We'll have to be redone. Okay. All right. Well, uh, so uh, some important decisions that have to be made by the town before uh, we get a rink. All <laughs> right. So um, next up, um, there is um, some 
reorganization of town departments that's being uh, discussed. Let's that's right. It's, it's being proposed, and I believe that it's, it's going to move forward. All right. Um, and it's, it's being done by the um, uh, town administrator, Patrice Garvin. And it's just a way of just making, uh, as she says, better defined management, a better defined management structure for human services. And what, what, what this will include is uh, consolidating uh, the Council on Aging, which is right now an independent like uh, yeah. uh, committee. Uh, they'll uh, bring that into the rec department. And you'll also bring uh, the veteran service uh, <clears throat> uh, a person who's right now in the um, health department and bring them into um, this the same human services department. Oh, so, <laughs> so will it be called a human services department? Uh, that I did not really get. I did, this okay. was done pretty quickly. This was an add-on to uh, the uh, select board's meeting uh, right. on Monday. And so it's still there's still things that have to be talked about. Any thinking about moving the health department into this new uh, human services department? The health department is, is has an elected uh, committee, has an elected board. So okay. they're independent in many ways. And they have to be independent because, you know, they're the health department. You can't, you know, have, you know, you can't politicize the health department, you know, you can want clean water. <laughs> it, it's better to have somebody who you could elect to uh, do that job. Okay. Yeah. So, but th I think you're going to see a lot more of this. I think you will see, you know, other departments, certainly there's IT, there's other places that, you know, uh, other uh, departments are, are in, in town that could, could, could use a, 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 a better defined management structure. And what they mean by that, uh, it is that you'll have you'll clarify uh, job descriptions and head counts. You know, you, it's like you'll be able to pare down, but you'll also will be able to have that within one organization. That would be something that uh, Brendan Fitz, who's um, uh, shown a great ability to do um, uh, management um, in mm -hmm. town. He's done a great job with just the rec department. And now he's giving more. He's being given more responsibility. That's not. To, uh, that's not to say. Uh, that uh, this is a done deal. Uh, there is a, a number of people, who, especially from the Council of Aid, Council on Aging, who believe that there's been a misunderstanding of the uh, uh, um, uh, of, of what the Council of Aging is to the town. You know, there's a there's a there's a memo of understanding that's between the town and 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 the um, Council on Aging. Um, it, does this violate it in any way? You know, they're 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 questioning some of that. Um, you know, so there is some pushback, and they believe that there's a better collaboration with the uh, library if you bring the library and the council on aging. But again, the library, as we talked about, they have their own elected, they are an elected um, board too, and they yeah. have their own budget. And you know, it's a, uh, it's something that um, um, I doubt if they really want to add like council of aging to uh, their. Uh, so their, I. I I do want to ask Franklin: Is there a budget dimension that's that yeah, to, to this money. that's potentially driving this? No, um, I don't think it's driving it. I just think you have so many disperse, and you know, when you do, and how many times we, you know, has the town gone through and said, uh, "What's this purpose? What's that purpose?" We've seen it with the library itself uh, and the library trustees. Uh, so um, it, it just appears that it just it just. It, it really is a better way uh, of of um, of uh, running a town if everything yeah. is consolidated within a within a group like human services. And 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 one way to perhaps describe it is that we have a number of of, of small town departments um, that consist of of managers and 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 you know a small number of employees and and in effect this um, reorganization eliminates the need for some of the managers. That's right. And, and if you've got one main manager, mm -hmm. which would be the head of the uh, recreation department, you know, th th that person then can, you know, have a better view of what's going on and can say, okay, let's move, let's, let's do this on the Council of Aging, give more services because we have, a, you know, a little bit more money or a leaner or organization. Uh, the veterans uh, agent was this seems like a perfect place to put him. I mean, mm -hmm. he was always kind of the outlier in the health department. Um, and, you know, maybe this is the start of something where we can see even more departments being uh, consolidated. So I, I will say this. It does appear that, that with Brandon Fitz as the interim director uh, for the, um, the B Street Center, there is an emphasis on trying to expand programming. That's, that's one of the reasons why they're doing it. You know, okay. it, it really is a... 
I think they see it as a way of expanding um, programming and offering and, and even offering more services to for seniors. So on, on net, this could be a very positive development. But again, there, there, there are people who believe that um, maybe, you know, the Council of Aging is a more specialized or, you know, they, they, it's, it's, you really can't put it into like a human services. It has to be its own entity. That I think that idea. I don't know what other towns are doing in terms of what where the um, council of aging on. Okay, so not a not a done deal yet, but, but it's going to happen. Okay, yeah, uh, you know, but I think you're going to you're, 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 you'll get the uh, obligatory um, public meeting and. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, so more to come on that. So and. Franklin, let's talk next about uh, the the Chenery Playground complex. That's right. It's a, it's you know every other playground has been given has been has gone through the uh, um, community preservation committee, and um, you only look need to look at the the great advancement what what's happened at Town Field. You know, it's, it it went from a, a really derelict kind of like you know a tennis court with a backstop. It's now really active. It's it's full of you know. Everything was built up and mm -hmm. done uh, correctly, um, and and thanks to the uh, uh, Community Preservation Act and and the money that that comes every year with that, either from the state or from you know the sale of homes in Belmont. Uh, we you know you look at Grove Street, you know just go down the list of tennis courts, you know all over town being built, and uh, what's going to happen is that uh, this name is coming up again. Brendan Fitz yeah. is, is promoting. Uh, of the renovation of the uh, Chenery, um, well, we call it the Q now, the Chenery Upper Elementary School's playground. It's you know, a big field uh, mm -hmm. behind Chenery. Um, and it's really threadbare. I mean, everything in there, uh, from the field itself to any of the playground equipment, even the, you know, the tennis court that used to be, you know, they had uh, temporary, you know, temporary classrooms on it. And and just areas that wasn't that weren't really well thought out when when the building was built back in the uh, late '90s. It, it's time for a real major uh, renovation, and they'll do the same thing they did like a Grove Street, and just you know take the field itself and just level it out, and you know put new playgrounds in, you know new areas, maybe even put a footpath in there, you know really think it out really well, uh, and. Um, um, any and you know maybe change and they're already thinking like maybe change the uh, where the tennis courts were and make mm -hmm. it into a, a a roller hockey area you know um, no pickleball um, <laughs> so so the and along with all the all the children's playground will be revamped just okay. as we've seen in other um, uh, uh, playgrounds in, in in Belmont so so again this is this would be funded. Th through the uh, Community Preservation Act. That's right. And, um, and, what, and what it is, it's it's also really expensive. It's going to be three point three million dollars. That includes the planning and the architectural, and the uh, work itself. And it will take you know um, uh, a while to get done. And it it really is a a lot of money. But it is going to be all done through the Community Preservation. A committee and right now it's an off cycle because they want to get this started so, right away. So so it's an off cycle application and um, um, if there's money in the fund, um, likely it would be funded. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but but um, that hasn't been decided yet, or has it? Oh, that's going to be coming before um, uh, town meeting. Town meeting has to approve. That's that's it. true. That's true. And um, I, I think they're they're also they're, but, uh, right now. You know, they, they've already started um, uh, promoting it. They will have a booth at the uh, at town uh, town day. So if you uh, go down to town day on us, uh, this will be this Saturday. Um, uh, you'll you'll get to meet the uh, the, the people who are uh, promoting it, and, and I don't really th I, I don't see the you know I, I think it's the op opposition if if we had a bad uh, you know if we had a bad uh, experience with other playgrounds or something mm -hmm. like that we have it. Well, we don't have that kind of opposition, but there there, there are some people in town I, who who question who question the uh, the Community Preservation Act uh, funding structure, which is basically a, a small percentage. Um, um, on top of prop property taxes right. that and, helps and, pay for and, these, and, and the state also. Uh, the state does up. does chip in. So. Yeah. All right. So um, so uh, we'll be looking forward for for uh, a town meeting decision on that. Yep. 
and um, and that would be coming before town meeting in June. That's right. Okay. And during the CPC, um, well, the, I think there's an, uh, just a few. Um, there's not a large number of CPC um, applications that are coming before town meeting. So this will be this will be uh, a couple more. Okay, and I, I I said June, but but the the next segment of town meeting actually starts on May 29th. That's right. And it will continue into June. All right, so Franklin, next up. Let's finish up with sports. Yeah, sports. Don't we all love it? Um, uh, so uh, sports teams came out. Uh, they're they're doing really well this year. Um, we have a number who are uh, um, uh, who are really uh, really um, uh, did a great job this year. Uh, boys tennis, girls tennis, both are like uh, they have over ten wins. Uh, boys tennis tennis is in eleventh is ranked eleventh in in the state. In Division One, and the girls are ranked tenth. Um, girls lacrosse has just been outstanding. They're twelve and five, uh, with uh, two games to go before they have to meet the uh, top-ranked um, team in the state. Mm -hmm. be, uh, but uh, they're going to the playoffs, and they're going to. They're right now twelfth seed, and they could even be even higher than that. So we're going to have a. We're at least have, we'll have um, for both uh, boys tennis, girls tennis, and uh, girls lacrosse a home game in the playoffs, and that's always exciting. Okay. Um, uh, baseball is on the edge. <laughs> Has to win a few more games, and then they'll be uh, secured to go to the playoffs. Um, volleyball had a. Um, if this is their first year, mm -hmm. they're uh, they're not going to be making the playoffs. But it's been a great year for them. You know, there's a lot of a lot of interest. People are now a lot of boys are going. Hey, I didn't know about uh, uh, volleyball, and and there's been a uh, the coach has said that. Um, People are saying, "Oh, I'm going to do. I'm going to come out next year for this." So that looks like it has a, a great uh, um, uh, future. Boys lacrosse it looks like they're on the edge. Also, they're they're fighting to uh, get into the playoffs, like they've done in the last three years. And let's see, there's uh, one other one, and that has to do with uh, softball. Now, softball has been the the poor sister <laughs> of sports in Belmont, uh, always finishing with only a couple of wins and you know getting beat up every 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 game. This is a completely different team. Um, while they are uh, eight and eight, uh, they've beaten the uh, teams that they have that that they will meet again, mm -hmm. and uh, they will have they'll have to win both of their games. But it looks like softball is going to go to the playoffs for the first time in. I believe it is 15 years. My God, that's that's great. Mm -hmm. Well, great news, and that's a nice thing to ramp on. Um, if you'd like to see more of Franklin's reporting again, please uh, check out Belmontonian.com and be sure to tune in to us next time, and we will see you then. Mm -hmm.